Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, which says, Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mi rijalikum, wala khi Rasulullah, wa khatam in nabin, wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men. But he is the messenger of Allah and he is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger of Almighty God, he was not sent only for the Muslims or only for the Arabs. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. Allah repeats the message in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا قَفَّةَ لِلْنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings yet do not know. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, and no other messenger, no other prophet is going to come after him, that's the reason he was not sent only for the Muslims or for the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humankind. We Muslims, because we believe that the glorious Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the last and final revelation of Almighty God. Whatever the Quran says, we believe. That's why we also believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, and we also believe that he was sent for the whole of humankind. But most of the non-Muslims, the non-Muslims in general, they do not believe that the Quran is the word of God. That's the reason they may not agree that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger of God and was sent for the whole of humanity. That's the reason to convince the non-Muslims. I'm taking the help and guidance of one of the verses of the Quran, which I consider as the master key for Dawah, for conveying the message to the non-Muslims. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, Come to common terms as between us and you. When we are speaking with different types of people, the best way is, as the Quran says, come to common terms as between us and you. So let us analyze what do the various religious world scriptures have to speak about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the non Muslims. If they believe in these scriptures, which they follow, if it's mentioned in these scriptures, if they consider it to be the word of God, then they have to even believe in the message of these scriptures. Let us first discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hindu scriptures. The Hindu scriptures can be broadly divided into two categories the Shrutis and the Smritis. Shruti means that which is revealed, which is understood, which is heard. The Shruti, according to the Hindu scholars, is considered to be the word of God. And they are divided into two parts, the Ved and the Upanishads. The Sanskrit word Ved is derived from the word vid, which means knowledge par excellence. And there are four types of Vedas. Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved and Atharva Ved. Though exactly when did these Vedas come into existence is not known. But according to Swami Dayanand Saraswati, who is the founder of the Arya Samaj, he says that the Vedas are 1310 million years old. But the majority of the Hindu scholars, they say that the Vedas are approximately 4000 years old. In which part of the world did it first 
come is not known who was the person to whom it was first given is not known in spite of all these ambiguities it is yet considered to be the word of god and it is the most authentic and the most high scriptures amongst all the hindu scriptures the next in authority are the upanishads derived from the sanskrit word upa which means near ni matlab down shad matlab sit sitting down near when the pupils and students sat next to the teacher to acquire knowledge it's called as upanishad which means knowledge which removes ignorance there are more than 200 upanishads but the indian culture gives a figure of 108 out of which some are picked up as the principal upanishads some have picked up 10 some 12 shirada krishna has picked up 18 and written a book the principal upanishads the next type of scriptures are the smritis smriti means that which is remembered it means memory the hindu scholars say smritis are scriptures written by human beings by rishis and they are next after the shruti the shruti is a higher than the smritis they are also called as dharma shastra because they tell how a life should be led by an individual by the community and by the society one of the most important smriti is the purana purana means ancient it talks about the stories of deities about the creation of the universe about literature and maharishi vyas has compiled the puranas into 18 voluminous parts one of the most important puranas is called as the bhavishya purana bhavishya means future this purana speaks about the future and it's mentioned in bhavishya purana parv 3 khand 3 adhyay 3 shlokas 5 to 8 a malaycha will come along with his companions from the desert and his name shall be muhammad peace be upon him and raja bhoj will give this mahadev arab a bath in the panch garb and will welcome him with honor and address him with reverence and say oh pride of human kind you have created a great force to fight against the evil people this prophecy of bhavishya purana parv 3 khand 3 adhyay 3 shlokas 5 to 8 it says that a malaycha will come malaycha in sanskrit means a foreigner he will come along with his companions talking about the sahabas from a marusthal marusthal in sanskrit means a sandy tract or a desert his name shall be muhammad peace be upon him raja bhoj will address this mahadev arab with reverence and say oh pride of human kind we know that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a pride of human kind as allah says in the quran in surah qalam chapter number 68 verse number 4 verily how art standeth on the highest standard of character allah says in surah azab chapter number 33 verse number 21 verily in the prophet muhammad peace be upon him you will find a very beautiful pattern of conduct he further says that he will collect a great force to fight against the evil people and we know that was done by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this prophecy refers to no one but prophet muhammad peace be upon him some people may say that the raja bhoj mentioned in this prophecy was present in the 11th century 500 years after prophet muhammad peace be upon him and was the descendant of the 10th generation of raja shilavahan these people they fail to realize that like the monarchs of egypt they were given the title pharaohs there were many pharaohs there was not one pharaoh like the kings of rome were called as caesars there was not one caesar there were many caesars similarly the kings of india were given the title bhoj so there was not one raja bhoj there were many raja bhoj so this raja bhoj is not the one they are talking about the 11th century it is much earlier before than the 11th century further it's mentioned in bhavishya purana parv 3 khand 3 adhyay 3 shlokas 10 to 27 the land of the malichas 
have been spoiled. There was an enemy who was killed earlier. Now he's been sent by a more powerful enemy. I will send a man by the name Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide these people to the straight path. Oh Raja Boj, you need not go to the land of the Pishachas because I, through my kindness, will purify you where you are. Then a man with an angelic disposition comes to Raja and tells him that Arya Dharm will prevail in this world. I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. My follower shall be circumcised, who doesn't have a tail on the head, who will grow a beard, who will create a revolution, who will give the call for prayer. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animals, but will not eat the flesh of swine. He will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. 